Hi, this is Lucy coming to you today about a very important subject, a subject that pertains to all of us. It is a subject of prayer. We're living in an age where we see chaos. We see things happening all around us. We, we hear of, of earthquakes, of hurricanes, of volcanoes, of, of, of killings, of wars and rumors of wars. And these things are, are cause of, of great fear and they're cause that would cause people to call out to God in prayer. And that's a good thing to pray. But we also need to understand what is effective prayer and what the Word of God teaches that uh, regarding prayer. And first of all, to know that prayer is a privilege that we have that takes us into the very presence of God. Prayer is something that we all do as human beings, even an atheist, if he's in the right or he or she's in the right situation, they're going to call out to God in prayer. Prayer is sometimes one of the hardest things to do because it goes against our human nature. We are so geared to self-dependence of relying on ourselves, of doing things in our own strength and power. And prayer is humbling because we have to admit that we can't do it all in our own strength and that we need a higher power. Prayer is also difficult because it goes against our flesh nature. And when we're in a rush, when we're in a hurry, often the first thing to go is prayer. Um, but the disciples had wisdom and they, when they came to Jesus in Luke 11, 1, they said, now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And when Jesus walked this earth, there was a, he exhibited a strong pattern of prayer. He would give out, he would teach, he would heal, he would be with the multitudes, but he'd always set time aside to be with his Father alone and spend time of prayer. We're going to look today in the life of Daniel, who was a man of great character, was a man that lived 70 years in Babylon, lived under four kings. And he was one of the very few people in the Bible that there's nothing negative said about him. He was a man of great integrity, a man of character, a man with a very strong prayer life. And we're going to look at three things. Number one, effective prayer requires knowing and obeying God's word. Number two, effective prayer is intentional. It is planned out. Number three, effective prayer is bold and it exercises faith in action. So for today, we're going to look at those three main points. First of all, in the book of Daniel, when we look at this, God's people had been uh, disobedient to God. And God had told them that if they followed other gods and if they followed other idols, that they would be given to other lands and that they would be taken captive. Well, we need to remember that God keeps his promises. We think of God's promises in the positive and we want all the blessings, but God's promises are also in the negative. He has promised that we will suffer consequences if we live as a nation in sin. And so, and that he will fulfill that promise. And we see it not only in the United States of America, but we saw it in the days of Israel when they were taken captive to Babylon. And God had told them over and over and, and over that they were to obey him and to follow his ways. And um, in, in Daniel himself said it in Daniel 9 verses 10 and 11, it says, He's, he's talking to the people. He says, we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law and has departed so, that not, so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has been poured out on us because we have sinned against God. In order to have effective prayer, we need to first look at the problem. Is the problem that we are facing um, a coincidence or is the problem due to the fact that we have turned our back on God? 
we look at our nation. This nation was built uh, on the foundations of biblical principles. But when we look at our nation in this day and age, we see babies being aborted. We see pornography on uh, ramp rampant. We see marriages breaking up, adultery, and all kinds of other things. We see people living for pleasures, as the Bible said that in the last days, they will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And first of all, we have to look at the problem. Are we part of that problem? We have to examine the cause before we can call out to God for the solution. So effective prayer requires that we know and that we obey God's word, the truth. He t tells us, he tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23 to 29, but I'll only read verse 29. He, God is saying to his people, but if from there, where is it there? The place where they were taken captive in Babylon. He says, but if from there you will seek, inquire for, and require as necessity the Lord your God, you will find him if you truly seek him with all your heart and mind and soul and life. That was from the Amplified Version. So Daniel recognized, as an older man, he recognized that the problem started with the people themselves, that they had departed from the living God. And so if we want the solution, we have to also look at what the problem is, what our part in that is, and what God requires. God requires repentance. You know, God loves us. God loves us immensely. But God hates sin and he will not brush it off as nothing. God will judge sin. And the scripture says that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. But that doesn't mean just to have God as a, as a name on our lips. But it means to have God as the one that we honor, the one that we obey, the one that we revere. It, it can't just be a, a verbal thing. It has to be in actions. But a scripture that is very well known is 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And it says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We look to government and we want the government to solve the problems. We, we say, well, we need to have gun laws or we don't need gun laws or whatever other situations. It's, it's this person's fault. It's that person's fault. And we look to the government. But that's not what God says in his word. He says that the solution begins with his people. That the solution has to be found in prayer. That the solution has to be found in repentance. And the Lord says, if my people, it is the church, the body of Christ. It is our responsibility to be light and to be salt in a dark world. And no wonder the world is dark. If we are blending in with our culture and we're not being light, we can't blame others. We have to first look at our responsibility. The church has to be light in a dark world. And the Lord said, if my people, if my people that are called by my name humble themselves, if we recognize that we, much like Israel of the past, have assimilated and accepted the culture and the ideologies and the principles of the world around us. But if we pray and we seek God, we seek his face. We don't just seek his hand. We don't just seek his blessing, but we seek his face. We seek to know who he is and what he desires. And we turn from our wicked ways, from their wicked ways. Whose wicked ways? Theirs, speaking of the people of God, our wicked ways. Because it's so easy for our hearts to go astray. It's so easy for our hearts to follow the ways of the world. But he says, if we turn, if we repent, then God will hear from heaven and will forgive our land and heal their, and it will forgive our sins and heal our land. You know, often I see people um, putting prayer requests on Facebook, and that's great. That's great. But sometimes I'll see the same people, maybe in one post, cussing people out, doing all kinds of, you know, you know, airing dirty laundry, and then they click, oh, yes, I'll pray for you. Well, newsflash, those prayers are ineffective. 
those prayers are not going to reach the throne of God. Those prayers um, are not what God calls true prayers. Because true and effective prayer begins with repentance. True and effective prayer begins with acknowledgement of our part in a problem and turning to the Lord with all of our hearts and repenting from our wicked ways. Effective prayer requires knowing and obeying God's word. Daniel had an effective prayer life because Daniel lived a life of integrity. Daniel lived a life of obedience to God. And that's the kind of prayer that God hears, that God, you know, cocks his ear to and listens to because that is what he, he requires, and the man or the woman that honors God, God will also honor them. Secondly, effective prayer is intentional. When Daniel was taken into captivity, he was probably about 15 years old, and, and there was a siege that the, the king sieged. That means that they took, they starved him out. They took the wealth from the, the temple of God. They took the young, the most talented, the most handsome, good looking, the, the smartest of the youth, and they took him to Babylon, and the purpose of the king was to assimilate them into the Babylonian culture so that they could serve the Babylonian gods. And when we look around us, that's what the enemy does. The enemy takes the, the, the wealth of God's people. The enemy takes the young people that, that be, should belong to God, that should be serving God, and he takes them and he wants to hold them captive and, and have him serve Satan's purposes and the world's purposes rather than God's purposes. And this exact thing happened in the days of Daniel. But Daniel, in verse 8, it, it says, Daniel, Daniel 1 verse 8, it says, But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So they were giving these young people um, the best of the foods, the king's foods. They were giving them the best of the wines. They were um, giving them the best of the clothing. And they, the idea was for them was for them to take on the Babylonian culture. And when they brought them over, they changed their names. They gave them names that were associated with the with the gods of the Babylonians. But Daniel, he decided, even as a very young man, even at the age of 15 years old, he made a decision in his heart. He proposed that he would not be um, influenced by that world around him, that he would not take in that culture, that he would be true to God and stay focused on serving God all the days of his life. And this is exactly what Daniel did. He lived in, in, in Babylon for 70 years under the reign of four kings. And throughout that time, kings came, kings went, but Daniel remained, and Daniel remained a faithful man to God. But effective prayer begins with intention. Effective prayer begins by saying, Lord, I'm going to seek you. Father God, I want your blessing. I want to seek your face. I want to know you. I want to obey you. And I want to make a difference in my world through the power of prayer. In 1 Chronicles 16, 11, reading from the Amplified Bible, it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Yearn for and seek his face and to be in his presence continually. What a beautiful scripture. Andrew Murray, who was a man known for prayer, says this. Let this be my chief object in prayer, to realize the presence of my heavenly Father. Let my goal be alone with God. So prayer is not merely seeking the goodness of God, which, which is something we do want, but prayer is seeking the presence of God, to honor God. It's not just, okay, God, we want to ask you for this right here, this problem, whatever it is, and then once you've answered our prayer, okay, bye God, see you later, and forget about him. That's not effective prayer. 
God in his mercy often answers our prayers. But what God wants is for us to have an ongoing, continual relationship with him. And the psalmist said, Lord, I want to seek your face. King David in Psalm 21 was a one thing kind of a man. And he said, one thing have I asked of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalm 27 verse 4. It wasn't a vacation. It wasn't a visit. He said, I want to dwell. And the Greek equivalent is the word uh, meno, which means to abide, to stay there, where we don't just visit God when the problems come, but that we abide in his presence continually, that we would be a one thing kind of a person. In the story of Mary and Martha, Martha was busy with all of the different things that she had to do to prepare and to take care of the house and the dinner and everything else. She had a hundred things on her plate. While Mary sat at Jesus' feet, longing to just be in his presence, just taking him in, just soaking in the goodness of the Lord. And when Martha was frustrated and, Lord, Lord, tell her to help me, Jesus said, Martha, you're, you're, you're worried about many things, but Mary's chosen one thing, and that will not be taken away from her. And that's what the Lord wants. Effective prayer comes from the heart of a one thing kind of person. One thing I have sought from the Lord. And that will I seek after to dwell in his house all the days of my life and to inquire in his temple. Effective prayer also is bold and it exercises faith in action. We humble ourselves, and that's the attitude that we are to have before God. And yet on the other side, we're to be bold, to be bold as lions, and to dare to ask God for great and mighty things. When Joshua was leading the people in the conquest of the land, in the, in the, in the book of Joshua, and, and the enemies were coming before him, he boldly asked for the Lord to hold the sun in place so that they would have enough daylight hours to finish the, the, the battle and to win the victory. That was some pretty bold asking. But God is honored when we ask big things of him because he is a big God and we are to be bold in faith and action. Well, Daniel was bold and he learned that boldness from the time that he was just a young a young man. And when he had proposed in his heart, it says there again in verse 8 that then that he requested, it says, therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Boldness and asking is asking God for those things. And then it has, the, it has been the boldness to ask man. He had the boldness to go to that eunuch, the, the one that was in charge of all of these young men, and ask. I, I don't, can you just give me vegetables and water? Try us for 10 days and see if we don't appear healthier than the rest that are taking in all the king's um, delicacies. And, and the, the eunuch was afraid at first, but Daniel approached him with boldness. He, he had the gut to ask and to go that second mile. And, and the eunuch allowed it. And in the end, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were honored by the Lord. And strange that all of the young people, because there was many young men that were taken captive, none of the others are their names known. Only Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, that their names were known because they honored God. And they were men that were effective in prayer throughout their time. They were men that prayed together when the king wanted to kill um, all of his his uh, the the soothsayers and the the officials because they couldn't tell him the dream. Daniel got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego together so that they could pray and seek the Lord's favor in response to to the problem. So Daniel was was bold in his prayer and he asked. The scripture tells us in James chapter. 4 verse 2 second part of it 
says, yet you don't have because you don't, you, you won't. Pray. So one of our problems is prayer is that we don't pray, is that we don't pray. We don't have because we don't ask. Another problem is that we might ask, but we ask for wrong motives. And James chapter 4 verse 3 says, And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. See, God's will is for the kingdom of God to be manifested here on this earth. In fact, the Lord's prayer in Matthew 6, 10 says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God wants us to ask, but God wants us to ask in line with his truth, in line with his words, not just for our selfish motives. Andrew Murray, again, quoting him, he says, God cannot hear the prayers on our lips often because the desires of our heart after the world cry out to him much more strongly and loudly than our desires for God. Wow. May the Lord examine the, the, the motives of our heart. Jesus in John 16, 24 said, Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask. And you will receive that your joy may be full. And in Matthew 7, 7, it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Ask, keep asking, approach his throne. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says that we can with boldness come before the throne to obtain grace and find mercy in time of need. The S in ask, seek, do not merely ask for things, but for him, seek after the Lord, seek after him. And the K, knock, follow through with the actions that are indicative of belief, that we would have true belief in him. So in closing, I'm going to repeat these po points. Effective prayer requires that we know and we obey God's word, God's truth. Effective prayer is intentional. We have to make a decision to seek the Lord. We can't wait until we have time. We have to make the time to seek him. And number three, effective prayer is bold. It asks God and it asks man for the resources that may be needed at that time. Effective prayer is bold and it exercises faith in action. May you have a day today where you seek the Lord in a greater way. God bless you, Lucy.